Bengals versus the Titans uh, in uh, in in uh, in Tennessee. This, I, I I like this. I like this one a lot. Um, I. I would love to, to see a 100% Tennessee team because I think that would just change the dynamic if, you know, we were looking at Derrick Henry, you know, being there and, and doing doing what he's used to doing. But I'm going to be honest with you, man. This Cincinnati Bengals team, they they hot. They they the, they the, they the nice new young toy in the, in the, in the parking lot <laughs> right there. Uh, Joe Burrow and Jamar Chase, and I said this at the beginning of the season, which is why I, I picked – Jamar Chase and fantasy football, I knew that those two guys would pick up right where they left off in college uh, a, a year and a half ago. And sure enough, that's what they did. They have a great core of weapons for Joe Burrow to throw to. They have a solid offensive line. Joe Mixon is really good young running back. And, you know, the defense, man, they've been playing some, some great football, you know, they beat up. They beat up on, on on Oakland, who probably you know shouldn't have even been in the playoffs anyway. But like you always say, Eric, you can only play who's in front of you. That's what they did. I like this matchup against against Tennessee. Um, again, I don't know where they're at health wise. You know, what I'm saying as far as that receiving court goes in the, in the running game. I think I think I'm I'm kind of go. I want to go with Cincinnati on the upset, bro. To be honest with you. I'm feeling the same way. I love this matchup for Cincinnati. I'm be honest, I do. Um, I the the one area that I think they can really expose Tennessee is throwing the ball down the field because all year Tennessee has given up big plays down the field. It doesn't matter who Tennessee has played; they give up the big chunk plays down the field. That's how the Jets were able to beat them. The Colts got big plays down the field on them. The Texans. Every game you look back at the, at the at the Titans, they give up big chunk plays down the field in, in the passing game. I think Cincinnati specializes in that. The one area that does concern me a little bit, Cincinnati's offensive line. You saw last week, that's what allowed the Raiders to get back in the game. Max Crosby and Ngakwe were starting to cause a little havoc in the second half, and the Raiders started chipping away to get back in the game. But when Burrow has just enough time, we see what he does. He he carves up your defense. To your point of, of uh, Jamar Chase, we both thought he was going to be really good. When we, shot, when we sat down with uh, Nesta and, and shot – uh, for, for his podcast on the draft, shout out to Nesta. We both said we had Jamar as the first receiver off our board. We we thought that highly of him. I think what's more surprising to me is how quickly Joe Burrow has become a star. Because last year I thought, all right, he got injured, but he he didn't show me enough. But this year, seeing him go toe to toe with Patrick Mahomes, seeing him go to toe to toe with Justin Herbert with, with an injured hand, those things to me, you know, the way they dominated uh, Pittsburgh early in the season and then winning in Baltimore, those are the things to me that said, all right, this kid is ready for prime time. He showed it last week against the Raiders. The only thing I said, the only thing I think that could stop them from winning this game is if the Titans find a way to get pressure on him. But if that old line holds up, as you mentioned, with all those weapons, not just Chase, Higgins, Boyd, Mixon, I think they're going to put up numbers on the Titans. And we know if Derrick Henry, whether he plays or not, this first game back, I don't think he's 100 yeah. percent. I'm not trusting Ryan Tannehill if this turns into a shootout. I agree with you. I like the Cincinnati Bengals in an upset. Yeah. And as as of yet, they haven't uh, officially said whether or not Derrick uh, Henry will be playing. Technically, he's still on, on the IR. So if he well, does- I, thought, I thought they brought him off uh, week 18 so that he would be eligible. Oh, okay. So he's so he is. He's, they so, they brought him off. I just yeah, but like you said, I don't know if they've actually medically cleared him to play. Yeah, so play. But they brought him off the IR, so he would be available if that's if if he's available. You know? Yeah, but again, the fact that if he was because if he was if he was ready to play, they would have tried to get him in in uh, week eighteen for a couple of a couple of snaps just because they're going into the playoffs with a first round bye. So it's like he's not really going to have any type of chance to to work whatever any type of kinks out or just to, you know, get that momentum back that he that he had in the first half of the season. If he does, if he doesn't play, it's, I think it's going to be a long uh, night for Tennessee because, you know, as 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 good as Ryan Tannehill has played for Tennessee, I still don't believe that Ryan Tannehill is that good of a QB to where he's just going to be able to carry this team to a playoff victory, even though they're playing at home. And I know you have Julio. I know you have AJ Brown, 
but out of out of that trifecta, Ryan Tannehill is the is the weakest link. I don't know if if he can actually put on like that in, in this game. And then on top of that, you know, the entire team, because now you're talking about, you know, we've seen how that buy affected the, the Baltimore Ravens two years ago, having that, having that, that first round buy, and then guys are a little rusty because now you haven't really played since week 17, because most teams are taking guys off. Either they're not going to play in, 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 in the last game of the season or they maybe play for a half or a quarter or something like that. So now you're talking about a lot of ring rust between now and when the Titans are actually playing, whereas the Bengals were actually fighting for something the last couple of weeks of the season. So they have that, that chemistry that's been heating up, you know, throughout the last couple of games of the season going into getting that, that first round uh, wild card win over, over Oakland. And then now you go to, to Tennessee, a team that their biggest weapon, you know, on offense, we don't know if he's going to be there. And if he is there, he's probably not going to be 100%, but I'll still take an 80% Derrick Henry over most running backs in the league. But just to show, just to show, you know, for the for the people at home, and this is for all, of, all our fantasy football football guys, in, the, in our fantasy football league, Derrick Henry – single-handedly won like like five games for my cousin Jonathan had Derrick Henry. He single-handedly won like five games for him. And then he and then he got hurt and my cousin season went from here and it dropped all the way. <laughs> like it was a complete change once Derrick Henry wasn't there. So if you don't get that 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 same that King Henry, you know, that guy, it's it's gonna be a long night. Well it, their success this season is a little bit a gift and a curse, right? So they were successful without Henry. Julio missed a lot of time. AJ Brown missed time, but they still got the number one seed. The curse in that is if you put Henry in, are you going to give him the same workload that you normally would have given him? Or are you going to treat him like a decoy? That's the thing. Right? Right. Because at, to your point about Ryan Tannehill as well, and I, I agree, Ryan Tannehill is only good if the game plan goes the way you expect it to go. Right. If we know we can give Derrick Henry 25, 30 carries, if we can get a lead early, if we can put ourselves in a position where he doesn't have to make too many risky throws, then it works perfect. On the flip side, if you look at the last few years in the playoffs, the games they lost, the AFC championship game in Kansas City and last year, the first round of Baltimore, those games were close throughout. He had to throw the ball. The defenses were, were piling up on Derrick Henry, especially Baltimore last year. Baltimore never sat anything less than nine in the box. They basically said, we playing one-on-one on the outside. We putting nine in the box. Show me you could throw it out here. And he couldn't do it, yeah. right? So that's that it's, becomes... It actually had the secondary to do that. A lot of right, no, no. But I'm just saying, but that's the game plan anyway, because you're, you're not scared of anything Ryan Tannehill can do. Now, yes, on paper, it sounds great to say we have Julio Jones, but Julio Jones missed most of the season. His first game back was week 18. Yeah. So we don't even know what Julio we're getting. Are we getting a rusty Julio who's who's still trying to figure out the offense? Or are we getting prime Julio who we thought was going to be there? Same thing with A.J. Brown. A.J. Brown missed six, seven weeks this year, then came back towards the end of the season. So this is a team that record-wise and success-wise, yeah, we applaud them for doing what they were able to do. How can it translate now to the playoffs when we need Derrick Henry to be 100%? We need Julio Jones to be 100%. And that's why I think the Bengals have the advantage this week because we know what we're getting with the Bengals. Yep. We know they're going to be at least five to six deep shots for Jamar. They're going to be a couple jump balls for Higgins because he's bigger than everybody in that secondary. Yeah, and, and there's going to be a steady mix of Joe Mixon. So we know what we're getting there with Tennessee. If they get down 10, nothing in this game, you and I are going to text each other and going to say, see what I mean? Now it's on Ryan Tannehill to prove that he can do it. Yeah. And, and I just don't Tennessee, they don't have the secondary to, uh, to honestly to, to compete with all of those <laughs> receivers, and, and they're all big, fast, strong receivers. They don't have the secondary that can compete with that. And like you said, if they go down, and you got to depend on Ryan Tannehill to dig you out of the hole, my money is going all the way on on that one. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. Um, for their sake, I, I hope you know Derrick Henry can actually play. Um, but again, I just what Derrick Henry we're going to get and how how healthy and how much he can actually contribute because even even with him being there and I know you mentioned like him being there as a decoy, you know, it's not like the 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 Super Bowl with the Broncos 
when it was like towards the end of the game and um, Terrell Davis couldn't see. And it was like, well, I got to be in the game <laughs> because if not, then, you know, obviously they're going to, they're going to telegraph what we're going to do if I'm not in the game. But that was with him starting the game at a hundred percent. And then, you know, just being beat up throughout the course of the game, this would be Derrick Henry coming in from the jump. And if he's not going to be able to give you those big impactful runs from the jump and they got to start doing something different. It's going to get, it's going to get, get real spooky for Tennessee. Yeah. I, like I said, the, the key for me is Tennessee's pass rush. Yeah. Can they get enough pass rush? Because I agree they, their secondary is not going to be able to hold up with the talent that the Bengals have. Yeah. If they can get pressure on Joe, if they can get hits on them, sacks and then force a couple rush throws, then they have a chance to make some plays. But if they don't get there, yeah. they're going to give up some big plays. I guarantee you, because that's that's been their MO all season. They're very boom or bust in their secondary. They're going to give up some big plays, but they're hoping that their pressure can get there so that they can create some turnovers. That, to me, is the key in this game. If Tennessee wants to win the game, I think the magic number is going to have to be somewhere around four sacks on Joe Burrow and probably eight total hits. Those are the two numbers I'm going to be paying attention to. If you can't get four sacks and eight hits on Joe Burrow, Cincinnati will have a big game, and I wouldn't be surprised if Cincinnati drop a 30-piece on them. Max. Yo, this is Teresa Weatherspoon, better known as Teaspoon, and you're watching Real Fans, Real Talk. Real Talk.